Kawabunga guys! Earlier last week, the Harvard Business School Library has published an article titled Open Source Software, the $9 trillion resource companies take for granted. And this is exactly what I have been talking about in one of my past videos. Go check this one out if you don't mind the Slavic smile I have on my face. Regardless if you do or not, let me try to summarize my main claim in that video. A lot of tech companies, not even big tech, although this is part of a problem are literally leeching off of open source software. Some companies offer their service for a fee around something that has been built entirely for free. Unexpected rhyme. What does it mean? Let's use the car analogy here. Imagine you're building a vehicle completely from scratch. That means you need to engineer all parts of your product entirely by yourself, including the engine, the transmission, the wheels and a lot of other parts. But imagine there was a shortcut. You didn't need to build all the parts yourself. The equivalent of what the modern companies do would be robbing the workshop next door and getting all the engines out of it. And if that analogy doesn't work, don't you dare hit me with that you wouldn't download a car. I'd say let's just go over the article together and find out what they are all about. What does it take to put a price tag on open source software? A resource so critical to global economy that 96% why not 69 percent of commercial programs include some code created, tinkered with or distributed for free by public facing tech forums. <laughs> Is this some sort of Harvard business slang for GitHub? <laughs> Just a hint for the next article, before forum software became a thing, we actually talked on BBSs. A new paper presents an eyebrow-raising figure. Without open source software and their ubiquitous code creation networks, firms would pay an estimated three and a half times more to build the software and platforms that run their businesses, or roughly 8.8 .8 trillion dollars, say Harvard Business School assistants and two colleagues. Have they been so ashamed they wanted to remain anonymous? The staggering scope of the findings could help put a value on the work, so senior leaders and non-tech managers at firms understand just how important hiring open source expertise is to success. Why would I hire somebody from the Axios development team if I am just working with HTTP requests? Is it just me or is this article a little bit off? The results mark among the first comprehensive figures to quantify how ubiquitous and integrated open source has become, illuminating that the products are often the backbone on which many companies build their organizations and products that they sell. To be able to say, look, this is no longer small, this is very, very large and it's very important, that's what she said. And this is the whole swath of the economy itself, gives open source advocates, some of them are embedded deep in IT departments trying to convince the superiors, ammunition, that this stuff is valuable. And leaders should be supporting it in whatever way that means. Well, yes, this is really the problem. I personally have never worked for a company that has been supporting open source softwares or libraries or anything that they were using I've never been told by managers, go and fix that bug in that library that we are using and submit a pull request on GitHub. It has never happened. Whenever something was broken or it had a critical issue, we just wrote it out and hoped that somebody else would do this for the company. To quantify the dollar value of OSS, the authors turned to two major sources, Census 2 of free and open source software and a joint project by the Linux Foundation, released in 2022. A service that scans almost 9 million company websites to understand how they are built, including what open source code they use. Just 18 code packages overlap between the two sources, making the two uh, datasets complementary. Although they looked at all programming languages, they narrowed in on the top five based on the data from GitHub, C, C including C Sharp and C++. It reads like humans including the earth and cooking. Am I right or am I wrong? Let me know in the comments down below. Java, JavaScript, Python and TypeScript, they also included the Go programming language to figure out what 
it would cost to replace the free human labor behind open source platforms. Well, the author by that means open source software, not platforms. The researchers calculated the estimated cost for an individual to recreate the software packages by measuring the number of lines of code. Oh, that's a, this is a terrible measure. It's really easy to get caught up into a mindset that the output of a programmer is the code. You can write lots of lines of very terrible code, which is barely maintainable, and call it a day. You can solve a problem very elegantly by just using functional programming. No, I didn't say that. But, but just one line of code. You know, programmers, they don't just write down software from top to bottom. This is not how it works. You know, you have to understand the problem that you are trying to solve on a very deep and fundamental level in order to make that happen. If you don't have a clue about technology, how the internet works, how networks work, how storage works, at least on a very basic level, then you're out of luck building a solution for a problem. But yeah, it can take you days, and then the solution for that problem would be just a couple of lines of code, whereas especially the less opinionated among us can write lots of code in just one go. Have you been reviewing PRs that are thousands of lines of code in length? The team calculated how many hours it would take to write the code from scratch using the Kokomo 2 model and wage data from salary expert to factor global and regional labor cost differences. Mm. I can figure this approach is very error prone, but... I mean, it's better than nothing. If you don't go by lines of code, then you have absolutely no metric. Nobody's going to believe this. The authors say their study is likely the most comprehensive so far on the topic. However, they caution that their findings may underestimate open source software's value. Yes, thank you very much for pointing that out. In part because their study didn't include operating systems, the part of computer systems that control all the other programs. Well, it's not a part, it's a software, right? When we first came up with numbers in the trillions, we thought nobody's going to believe this. But then, when we started digging a little bit more and thinking about the global demand for software and what companies already spend on software combined with the fact that open source has become so predominant in so many companies, whether they know it or not, how can a company not know that they are using open source software? Don't bullshit me seriously. You're at least using Git. Then that giant number started to seem more feasible. The 8.8 .8 trillion number represents the demand side value of OSS, if OSS did not exist at all, and every company that used it had to rewrite that software from scratch. Yes, this is absolutely what I have been saying for as long as I develop software commercially. If open source software ceased to exist, then all tech companies, but the, but the huge ones, would go bankrupt just in an instant. Imagine writing your own IMAP client. I mean, do you know how IMAP works? It will cost some 4.2 billion to build those software packages if OSS existed, but all of the most widely used packages were deleted and needed to be rewritten the research finds. Further, some 5% of programmers were responsible for more than 90% of the value created for both supply and demand. Yes, this is also a thing that I have been saying before. Now, do you know how many people are behind OpenSSL? You know, the thing that encrypts traffic between your browser and every other website. Just two guys. And it's totally undervalued for what it is. Higher quality firms are more likely to contribute to OSS and OSS boost their subsequent performance. Boards have to be thinking and understanding that by using open source, they're saving lost lots of costs. Um, they are also exposing themselves to the risk that a single person getting run over by a bus may, be, may blow up the, the whole company. You know what can also blow up your company? The fact that people need to pay bills. And if somebody desperately needs work right now, guess what they are going to do? They are going to stop working on their open source side project. 
there have been efforts to have the government use more open sources. Open sources? Like Wikipedia or something. As a cost saver. These findings are very, very interesting. And from my personal experience in the tech industry, I would say this is very, very plausible. If you are running a company or you are a startup or something like that, so please consider contributing to open source. And how can you do that? First of all, you can adopt an open source project. Offer your help. Second, consider open sourcing your own projects. The third thing, if you lack expertise on your team, consider writing documentation for an open source project. And the last thing, consider supporting open source with your money. No, seriously, you know, this is labor that people are doing for free. Just for the community, just because they can and just because they love it. I am creating these videos in my free time as well. So if you're still watching and you like this video, please also consider subscribing. And I'll see you on the next one.